gotta take my hair down. Welcome to All Things Internet. The play- no, I, it's well, a new season. Well, here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. Welcome to All Things Internet, the show where we talk about things we see on the internet that usually have to do with the internet, and Emily tries her darnest to fact check and research whatever she thinks I'd find relevant. I'm Rich Ballinger. I'm Emily Brostaff. And welcome to season four of All Things Internet. Woo! woo. We did it! You look nice. I haven't seen you since you put your makeup on. Oh, Hello. thank you. You're welcome. I put some ink on my eyelashes. What do you call it? Goop? Mascara? Yeah, but like if you don't want to say that, like what would you say? Like I put paint. some paint. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to stick with goop. Goop? No, <laughs> you told me you don't like the word goop. Yeah, true. And ointment. Oh. You don't like ointment. You don't like any of that stuff. Yeah, true. Um, Welcome to season four, where we've made no changes except make this like 10 minutes longer. <laughs> that was our biggest request. Because <sighs> you guys, you're not sick of us yet? I know. We asked you guys like what you were interested in, what you wanted us to do differently, all that good stuff. Would you like to hear the top suggestions? Um, Yes. Was it me being naked? Oh my God. How did you know? That's number one. Mm, just figured because it was the me people, a bunch. Give the people what they want. <laughs> um okay so number one request was longer episodes we've got this i post so much on the internet is it that you want more emily i think they just want more information because when honestly when i'm driving and i'm listening to a podcast i do look for long podcasts because i don't want to have to find a new one and new subject it's like that new, makes sense you know oh uh, this season we're also posting friday mornings early early like 3 a.m our time 6 a.m east coast time so that you can listen to us while you get ready to start your weekend yeah and that way when you go to like parties on saturday you're like hey did you hear this really cool piece of news you can be like i read this article that said yeah. when really it was us being stupid fact checking 30 percent yes 30 <laughs> well you give give yourself a little more credit i do like 90 percent. yeah sometimes i get a little lazy at the end but because i'm like hey you know we have to record today and you're like oh oh great let me just this yeah. is what i think <laughs> These are my assumptions on the subject. So you can be like Fun Day Friday girl that walks into the office. Fun Day Friday? Fun Day Friday. With facts, figures, and feet. No. No. Okay. <laughs> F- we need to do something. Fun Day Friday girl walking in with facts, figures, and fundamental rights. That's amazing. Yes. And I love it. Thank you. We're going to put it on a t-shirt. Buy it. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Fun girls who like Facts, figures, and fundamental rights. Oh, my God. Heard it here, folks. F- f- folks. Heard it here first, folks. And probably never again because we'll forget. Uh, yep. In two seconds. Great. Um, all right. So number one was longer episodes. Then they want us to continue doing Dog of the Day. Today here is Daisy with us because we didn't put her crate in the garage yet. Yep. She's so. a good girl. Um, and they want me to keep putting graphics on the screen when we talk about things. Congr- which thank you for doing that. I'm happy to I, do. No one... Only if you've edited videos will you know how much extra time that takes. It doesn't take that much extra effort. But it's pretty mindless. But oh my goodness, the time. Yeah. Like, like one little graphic mm-hmm. is probably another three minutes, four minutes. Yeah, because you have to find it, make sure you can use it. Then you have to download it. Then you have to size it, pull it in. Yeah, put it, yeah, put it right where you should put it yeah. like on the screen and time wise. Yeah. And if you're like, do I need to add a sound effect? <laughs> And it's like a whole thing. And you have to watch it like twice over after you do that. Yeah. I don't mind doing it because when I watch stuff, I want like. Oh, no. I just saying like, I appreciate you. Oh that was my roundabout God. way of saying that. Also this year, I'm trying to be nicer. Ah, uh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to drink more water. Um, that was right. actually mine too. But then I just decided business wise, I should just be nicer. I love that. Yeah. Oh, my God. So is this like the perfect opportunity to name who employee of the month is? Daisy. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll give it to her. Yeah. Oh, baby. Um, all right. Then they wanted to have a guest every now and then. So maybe we could have your mom on. I asked and I was like, come be on ATI. And she goes, I'm babysitting the twins. I was like, well, there are other days when you could. OK. Maybe she's just like, you're like, how about February 32nd? And she's like, actually, I'm going to have I a flu that day she says like she, <laughs> honestly she really enjoys like the people that listen to us yeah. and she really enjoys us she has a really hard time getting in front of the camera knowing she's gonna do it. it's one thing when we're vlogging yeah. and we stick it in her fra- face sometimes yeah. she will she'll do a little thing or sometimes she'll be like no no um <laughs> but for her to consciously be like yes i'm gonna go sit down like it was really hard for her to do ati the first two seasons we did it Aww. um she kind of got used to it i think it was it was easier just over zoom and 
I always did like a 10 minute chat with her just her and I beforehand yeah. and she's like I loved those <laughs> well yeah if you didn't grow up like you and your siblings on camera and in that generation they didn't have YouTube and social media no like, I'm it's sure all new it's foreign and like yeah weird so and- it just takes a little extra effort for her so she does it when we really really want her to but if I wasn't if I'm not persistent she'll yeah. just be like oh you know I think I'm busy well we did that'd promise. be fun we promised. Once oh, we hit, they get to a hundred thousand. I will be persistent. We will bring ATI to her. Yes. Yes. Honestly, we will. We will. <gasps> Can we have a chicken? Boots. What's his name? Mittens. C- cuffs. Socks. Slippers. slippers. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a chicken there. Just have a dog in the day. We'll have a chicken of the day. Oh my God. That would make me so happy. Uh, we're almost there. We're yeah. almost a hundred thousand. I know. It's so close. Yeah. Um, they also wanted uh, a background of some sort. I'm working on it. Don't touch it. It's still wet. Sorry. Um, Yes. I also have wanted a background. I'm halfway there. I just have to put up some shelves, some floating shelves with some plants, and then you'll have a background. But she painted. I painted a s- half circle on the wall. Look at that. Is that an arch? That's a, uh, I like half circle. I did that. She did that. I'm pretty proud of myself. I, I just kind of like went like for it too. Right here. Yeah. Like a basketball sized. And then I was done. And then you painted the floor. And then a little I, bit. Well, it just looked like it needed a little. <laughs> just a little thirsty. Needed possessed. some moisture. Um, people wanted more conspiracies, but this isn't a conspiracy theory podcast. So we're no, gonna... we're trying to do facts, figures, and fundamental yeah. rights here. Occasionally, I'll throw one in if it really gets me. I'm kind of feeling the facts, figures, and fundamental rights. Can we make this like our tagline? I'm telling you, like the fact that I remembered it. Right. Three minutes later, says I, it, it should probably stick it does just roll this off is, the tongue it's a yeah this is a podcast of facts figures and fundamental rights i appreciate that oh my god oh it my god four seasons for me to <laughs> freaking figure out what the tagline of this is this is amazing so this will go on a t-shirt yeah oh my i've been god. trying to figure out new merch i already figured out rachel uncensored there you go and i was like i wanted to do two rachel uncensored two atis and two um unladylikes just me oh yeah whatever I have, I have actually just one uncensored done, but facts, figures, and fundamental rights. Look at you. Just fun girls loves facts, figures, and fundamental rights. Fun girl. Wait, what was the other one? Friday fun. Facts, figures, and fundamental rights. So it's like Friday fun, Friday. Fun day, Friday. Fun day, Friday, girl. <laughs> but this, this t-shirt's is too much. going to have like a paragraph written on it just by the time we're done. words that start with an F and then just randomly girl in there. <laughs> What's that? Feta cheese. (laughs) And no free feet pics. Oh, I thought we could go with free feet pics. No free cheese. No. Fun day Friday. Facts, figures, fundamental right. Honestly, someone put it on a T-shirt. We'll see how we feel about it. I'll put it on a (laughs) T-shirt. Well, with the feta. I don't eat feta. Even when I did eat cheese, I didn't like feta. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorite cheeses. Ew. Fact of the day. Oh, okay. Three fact. feet pick. Oh. Fundamental. No. No. Uh, I was just going to say, let's do our fact of the day. Oh, okay. Fact of the day. I love feta cheese. I could literally put it into a ladle and shove it in my mouth. I could get a, 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 a tube. We're not going to. Funnel? We're, we're not. A funnel. That's the word for it. <laughs> yeah, I knew where you were trying uh-huh. to and, get your way out of. <laughs> and I want you to funnel the feta right down my glizzy. So, But then you can't taste it on your tongue. Oh, that's true. But then when I burp, it's like. Huh. eating it all over again. Ew, you like to burp it? Mm-hmm. Fact of the day. Your turn. Oh, I need a, I need a, okay, fact of the day. Fact of the day. Fact of the day. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is good, I can tell. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's brewing. I, I feel like I've already told you this. Oh. I used to do this as a kid. Oh, I, I used to do this as a kid and then realized it was gross and then started doing it as an adult again. No. Putting mayo on my bagels. No, I'm okay. I'm not judging. It's okay. That sounds... I would love to try that someday. No, you know why? Okay, as a kid, I was just an idiot. Yeah. And we never bought cream cheese. That was too expensive. Yeah. But we always had bagels for some reason. I think we just put butter on them. Oh, right. And in my head, I was like, I'd see people on TV putting cream cheese on it. I was right. like, okay, white creamy substance. Need a white... And I was like, sour cream doesn't sound right. Mayonnaise, though. And I would do that. And then I stopped, because that's gross. And then as an adult... Uh, I don't eat dairy now. So like Abby and I were at my sister's house and we were starving and we didn't want to bug her for food because, you know, she has 17 kids. And so we were like, okay, they're bagels. And then I was like, there's nothing to put on these bagels. And Abby's like, there's mayonnaise. No. And I was like, 
I used to do that as a kid and it's gross. She goes, I'm trying it. And then we both were like, this ain't bad. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So then I did it again over Christmas. Uh, is mayonnaise an instrument? No? No. SpongeBob? Anyone? No? Oh, me. okay. <laughs> yep, right. there it is. All right. Um, and yeah. Oh, and then they want us to bring back questions at the end if we have time. We just always run out of time. <sighs> We're you trying know? to make these a little bit longer, you greedies. Yeah. Greedy mother. Oh, my God. How dare you want more of us? How dare you <laughs> want us to do our job more? God. You going to pay us more? Yeah, because Probably. we can put another ad in there. Probably. So <laughs> it does actually work out in the long run. Fine. We will do it of our own free will. And but not for free. But not for free. <laughs> you have to watch another ad. <laughs> Speaking of, before we actually get into news, was that everything? Yeah. 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 Before we actually get in the, to the news of this last month. I know. We've got a lot to boil into. Yeah. Boil into. Dive into. I like boil into. We're going to boil Feel into like a it. a little lobster. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's boil down onto that information. <gasps> that was me screaming, you know, like the lobster. What did Danny say? They're not actually screaming. It's just it's air being the released. air coming out of them. Yeah, yeah. They're not actually screaming. No. Um, sorry. <laughs> what I was. What? Went somewhere else. Let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. When things are going well in life, little mishaps that come up are easy to handle. But when things are hard, little things that go wrong seem to just break you, which can just spiral into you being frustrated because you aren't acting or performing in the way you want or know you can. Well, working with a therapist can help you get you closer to the best version of you, helping you learn how to handle every part of life, no matter what is happening around you. I've been in therapy for years now, and I genuinely became a more sound person because of it. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So if you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash all things internet today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H E L P dot com slash all things internet. And we are back. Thank Woo-hoo. you to our sponsor for sponsoring this episode in which you've sponsored. The smelly smell that smells. <gasps> I smell the smelly, smelly smell of something that smells smelly. Oh my Bad. gosh. All right. So we're obviously going to talk about uh, so stuff that happened this week, right? But we missed a lot in our two week hiatus that we took. Yeah. Not our hiatus, our mental wellness break. I like that. That sounds better. It's just a season. Like, let us meet yeah. and have a, like, a holiday break. Yeah. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk. You know about- what we did with that time? Painted this wall. Uh, did the cork wall. We filmed did. other videos. <laughs> did we relax? No. What's a relaxation? No, I went snowboarding. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, I watched Twilight. That is also fun. Dude, when I was, in, I was in Washington and as we're driving through, all I could think about was Twilight. <laughs> Little na, spider na, monkey. Na, na. I better hang on tight, spider monkey. <laughs> is that what I'm wearing? Yes. Yes, that's what my sweatshirt <gasps> I says. I didn't realize that's what it said. That's all I was thinking that as we're driving through all these gorgeous, massive pine trees. And Abby goes, this is such a relaxing drive. And I was like, it is, baby. And in my head, I'm just seeing Edward Cullen jumping from tree to tree. <laughs> you think you can outrun me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, <gasps> that's going to be beeped. <sighs> Flipping. Flipping, f- f- what was I going to say? No. Nope. Flipping, f- a, a f- well, I was trying to make an F thing where you fumbled. Oh, fumble of the day. Fumble of the day. There we that, go. I was going to get there someday. How everything we do is now going to be an F word. I like this. Mm-hmm. <gasps> F word podcast. Go. Anyway. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about what's happened recently, but I quickly want to touch on the stuff that we missed. So first we got to talk about Andrew Tate. Ha <laughs> ha, idiot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, <laughs> stupid. Mm-hmm. If you don't know who Andrew Tate is, first of all, congratulations. God, thank you. How have you achieved that? And tell me how. We have a friend. I'll tell you later who it is. Went on a date with a dude and she was vibing with him. And he's like, you have to admit, Andrew Tate's funny, though. He's Bye. a piece of trash, but he's funny. Bye. She never spoke to him again. So I just, would have gotten up and like left, left. She um, enjoys attention. Okay. So she wanted to get her attention fell and then she left and then completely ghosted him. I love that. Yeah. Get but he drinks. was in with her. Get your drinks. Get your appy. Yeah. Leave. 
Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so if you don't know who Andrew Tate is, um, he's a 36-year-old disgusting misogynist domestic abuser who happens to have his own internet show uh, where he uses his platform to encourage violence against women and other Just minority like, groups. I think we can all agree that violence is a no-go. Well, for Andrew Tate... I just feel like we're past that era. We are no longer... Is he a quirky boy? A quirky boy? A, a, a qu- quirky boy? Is he a quirky boy? Is he like... Eh. <laughs> Is he goofball? Like, uh... <laughs> oh my God. In all seriousness, no, though, it's not funny. No, um, not at all. It's trash. But at this point, we like I have to joke about it so I don't cry. Um, even though I understand how serious it is. Yes. So he said things like women belong in the home. They shouldn't be allowed to drive, that they're a man's property. Also, trigger warning. Um, also, okay, have you ever thought about, about this? When you're trigger warnering. You have to say what you're warning about. Yeah. But we're going to be talking about sexual violence um, throughout this story. So what did he, you call it? SV? Is that what I've... Um, oh, SA. SA. Okay, yes. Yeah. So yeah. We're going to talk about SA. So he also thinks that rape victims must bear the responsibility for their attacks. And he has come out and like proudly say that he dates women ages 18 to 19 because he can make an imprint on them. So he's. Wait, I want to go back to the the essay thing. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So because he can, it's their fault? Yeah, he's, he's saying it's partially their fault. He's basically using the what were you wearing argument. Yeah. What did you do? Well, what did you say? Did you actually like, you know, he's basically using that argument that it's, it's oh partially their fault. Yeah. He, I dress like a tomboy dude surfer human mm-hmm. and I still get hit on. Yeah. By men. I yep. scream lesbian. Don't touch me. My dick uh-huh. is bigger than yours. Uh-huh. In your and big red truck. In my giant red truck says feminist on the back. Uh-huh. Feminism. And I still people are constantly checking uh-huh. like. That's one of my favorite. What? Yeah, that's one of my favorite displays they did. I want to say it was at the Smithsonian in Washington D.C. Is they took the outfits of actual victims and put them They're in display in, like, cases, sweatsuits and baggy pajama. Yeah, like it, nothing. Again, even if you were naked in front of a man, he has no reason to touch you without your permission. No, here's the thing: but, as lesbians, who very much appreciate and are turned on by the female form, and we get very drunk. Oh yeah. And there could still be a, an extremely attractive naked woman in front of me and us, whatever. And the need to violate them, violate them does not occur inside of me. Nope. No. The, I've literally been extremely drunk and my girlfriend is changing in front of me and we're just, and mm-hmm. her tummy hurts. Time for bed. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's really not that hard. It's. I've the the urge to say the N word, the urge right. to sexually assault, right? To degrade, hmm. to be any any phobic, hmm. <laughs> doesn't happen when I'm. I'm what? I'm confused. What like magic pill did you take to like make that happen? Because <laughs> apparently Andrew Tate needs it. <laughs> like for th- I just don't. Yeah, he's a, he's just a, like. To, to sum it up, he's a trash, pathetic excuse yes. for a human being. Like, horrible person. Um, and I just, Sorry. Yeah. No. I also have the power. I'm a larger person who does work out. I have the yeah. power to overtake yeah. the average woman. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I would ever or want to or have the desire or thought about. Nope. Because we respect women and respect boundaries and consent. You it's know? not hard. <laughs> it's cute. And we have hot girlfriends. Yes, we do. <laughs> Because we're not trash people. Yes, we do. And we don't um, get arrested. Nope. So, well, karma had its kiss for him. Um, after he got arrested in, well, he, so <clears throat> let me restart. He got arrested in Romania after starting an online fight with a literal child. Um, so I love her so much. Yes. Yeah, so if you don't know, um, he started a Twitter fight with Greta Thunberg, who got super famous for her like environmental activism. Yeah. She would skip out on school ev- with her parents' permission every Wednesday to go sit outside like her parliament's office in yeah. Sweden with with environmental like save the environment signs. Power um, her parents, by the way. Love it. Ended up going viral online. And now she's like this. I mean, mega. She's a huge advocate. Yeah. Incredible person. So she's always tweeting out statistics and facts on Twitter, trying to get people to like wake up and realize and, you know. And she is 
not just like environmentally smart. This girl is yeah. like street smart with her words. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what she tweeted back at Donald Trump one time, but like she's very quick. Extremely. Yeah. So Andrew Tate ended up tweeting at her. She didn't provoke him at all. He just She just exists and he can't handle that. Right. So he tweeted at her, hey, Greta Thunberg, I have 33 cars. My Bugatti has a W16 8.0 L quad turbo, whatever. Uh, <laughs> my Fer- Sick, bruh. <laughs> yeah, my Ferrari has whatever. This is He's so cool. He has a whopping heart on him. <laughs> um, he said, please provide your email address so I can send a complete list of my car collection and their respective enormous emissions. To which she responded, please do enlighten me. Email me at small pp energy at getalife.com <laughs> to which he decided to make a video response to her where he's like sitting it kind of looks like he's sitting in a hotel room and he's just spewing nonsense at the camera trying to like yeah. be mean to her um and this would be his ultimate downfall because after he tweeted that video back to her um local authorities in romania who have been searching for him this entire time determined based off of a pizza box that That was in his video that was in his video that he was in a certain neighborhood and zoned in on him bust through the door and arrested him and his brother for sex trafficking i saw a thing that was like greta took his uh, um, carbon emissions rates to zero with a singular tweet um because they just claimed all 13 of his cars they impounded them good Mm -hmm. so have fun with those emissions now um (laughs) now to be this is my thing don't start stuff if you know oh, yeah. like I if no one is doing negative, right. why would you start anything? Greta wasn't putting out a negative. Because he he's come out and he said several times that it is his goal to be as controversial as possible because that's what gets you the views. It's true. It's oh, true. We're saying his name right now. Right, but like And he's that that just proves like he is he doesn't have he's an extreme narcissist with uh, without a soul basically. Like he doesn't care yeah. about all he cares about is himself being as famous and as rich as possible yeah. he doesn't care about he anything else he doesn't actually care about what he's saying no he doesn't be- i'm sure he doesn't even believe half of what he's no, saying it's the same thing with like some things that joe rogan says and especially candace owens that mm, that black yes. commentator that's like pro-trump and says that um racism doesn't exist and yeah, that yeah, women yeah. are just meant to bear babies like i know in my heart she does not believe that crap She's just extremely narcissistic and she wants a platform to speak and she's yes. figured out how to do it. And yeah. it's freaking pathetic. Yeah. So instead of like you. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's easier to get your name in the picture papers by being a d- than yeah. by being a good person. Right. So I, I'll be fair and I will say that the. All right. I'm going to try really hard. The Directorate for Investigating Organized Crime and Terrorism. They go by DICOT for short. Um, told the Washington Post that the pizza boxes did not play a role in the arrests or their timing. But everyone's basically saying, like, that's BS. Just own up to it. Like, you know, yeah, why can't you just because it, it was embarrassing for them to be like, we've been tracking him for years and we couldn't find him. And because of a pizza box, where is he normally located? Is it Romania? Um, I want to say he's a, a British citizen. Got it. Okay. Um, or UK citizen, whatever you call it. Um, but he, he's in not that we don't like it's doesn't like, we just are super uneducated on where people come from. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, was it like British citizen versus UK citizen and stuff? Yeah, I, I mean, yes. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> I was going to go into a geography lesson. I just didn't want someone to be like, you, obviously they are from this place, which means they're this. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know he's in the US sometimes. I know he's like, he pops around Europe, but he's been kind of hunkered down in Romania hiding out for a bit. Wow. Um. So after, oh, and it, I like I, I deep dove into this because I was like, why did he move to Romania? Because that's like not where he's from. It's mm-hmm. kind of like, I, I mean, this this could potentially be an ignorant comment. So feel free to like educate me in, in, you know, our comments nicely. But I feel like Romania is a very harsh country. Like, um, yeah, the stern. I'd use the word. Yeah. Stern. So like I was wondering, it's not like he moved to like Costa Rica or yeah. like Jamaica, like somewhere like fun. I was like, he has to be moving there for a reason. Yeah. He made a whole episode about it. He said. His reason for the move to Romania was because, and this is his quote, it would be easier to evade SA charges. And he said, this is probably 40% of the reason I moved here. I'm not a rapist, but I like the idea, idea of being able to do what I want, like being free. So he moved there because he knew he was in trouble for the 
uh, sex trafficking, human trafficking charges. Yeah. And he knew he could get away with it there. But then he just ended up getting arrested there. Well, because, yeah, a Romanian was probably like, don't say that about us. Right. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> they're like, we're trying to get people to move here, not flee yeah. from here. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know that they're not as progressive um, there. Yeah. So uh, you would think maybe like well, it would be easy to get away from there. And but. all of these investigations started because in one of his episodes that he posted, he was basically bragging about how he was a sex trafficker. He, and, But He's so dumb that he didn't realize that's what he was bragging about because he said in the episode he was like, I convinced these beautiful young women to fall in love with me. I like basically like a pimp does like I wine and dine them. I make them fall in love with me. And then I ask them if they would do me a favor. I ask if they would do some webcam business for me. And I say that they can keep some of the profits. And then he said once they're hooked and he's cut off all of their communication with other people and like they're 1000 percent dependent on him he takes all of their profits and they get nothing yes that is human trafficking yeah that is how you do that right and he his home actually got invaded a few years back and they found a bunch of women in his home that were like very neglected and i don't know i tried really hard to figure it out but nothing came of that but now he's officially arrested so now we're just waiting to see where this goes. Don't ever do favors for men or anyone. Like I know because yeah, no. there's been like, don't ever do sexual favors for people. No, thank you. No. I'm if good. you're going to do, if you're going to be a sex worker, all the money goes to you. Don't let anyone take your cut. Nope. All of it goes to you. And just to clarify, we are very pro sex worker. Oh, but we honest. want it safely done. Yes. Not human trafficking. Yeah. But serious. That's what I'm saying is like, Make sure there's no one who's like, oh, I'll help you. You just give me this and then mm-hmm. have them run thing. No, it's you. Yep. You get all of the money. Yeah. So that's what that was like the big thing that we missed because he's been a big internet yeah. personality for like, I want to say at least a year now where he's gone like mega viral several times. Yeah. And it's, it's gotten so concerning that even Elon blocked him at, on Twitter at one point And like he was just yeah, Elon unblocked him. That's what and then the first thing he did was tweet Gre- Greta, I think. Oh, OK, yeah. OK. okay. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm glad to see him getting taken down. But I was like, literally, it was the week, our first week of break. And I was like, dang it. I was like, this would have been so good to talk about. So I just felt like we need to put in our two cents. All right. All right. So this is a little bit of a tough story. And then we'll move into not so serious stuff. Okay. Um, But needs to be talked about. So Logan Paul, we haven't heard. Whoa, blast from the past. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard that name in a long time. Um, But we all knew it was bound to happen. So after laying somewhat low, I want to say, okay. for these past few years, because he's really gotten into like WWE wrestling. He has his own drink brand. Like, yeah, he's he, just doing other stuff. Yeah, he's been he's been laying pretty low. Um, he has found himself in another controversy. Oh, wow. Shocking. <sighs> Shocking. So a few years back, Logan adopted what he claimed to be a micro mini pig with his ex-girlfriend. And for those of you that don't know, very clearly, plain out, this is a thousand percent fact checked. I will die on this hill. There's no such thing as teacup pigs, mini pigs, micro mini pigs. What the breeders do is they remove the pigs from their mothers way too early and then they starve them so that they remain small and they can't grow and it stunts their growth. And then they breed, they uh, sell them to you. And then once you bring them home and you start feeding them properly, they grow into a normal sized pig. So it's like there are no such thing as teacup. pigs. Absolutely not. It does not exist. You, what? you can't do it. It does not exist. So all these breeders claiming that they have mini teacup pigs, they're abusing the pigs. So I did not know this mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, it's a really dangerous and bad industry, especially because these people like like people like you, like if you wanted to go get a micro mini pig, you wouldn't have known. And then no. when you brought it home and it grew into this giant pig that's like, you know, double the size of Daisy. Like, what are you supposed to do with it? Yeah. You know, people think they're bringing home this little pig that they can litter train. I had a friend in high school that she said she got a micro mini pig and she litter trained it and it was really small for the first three months and then it hit six month mark and it started blowing up and they had to give it away to a sanctuary yeah because it's too big yeah people don't know so very clear right now does not exist so don't feed into it and logan paul fed into this facts of the day facts of the day um so basically he bought this micro mini pig made a whole video out of it it was like the center of his channel for a really long time um and she very quickly grew into a barnyard big thick prize winning yeah. looking girl um and he decided to move her living quarters outside once she got full grown because like it's not a house animal anymore yeah but this was a big mistake uh because 
Uh, pigs are very connected, intelligent, self-aware. They're smarter than dogs. They're smarter. That's why I don't eat them. Like I know it's. I know some of the comments can be like, "You eat chicken." Please don't take that from me. But pigs, <laughs> I don't yeah. need any of it. <laughs> yeah, pigs. Um, they have the emotional intelli- intelligence of a toddler. Like, yeah. Like they're so they're such social creatures. And so when you move the pig outside, I. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say with good intentions to give her more room and to let her be a little more natural since she was like, yeah, it's a pig. You think it's supposed to be outside. Right. She got super depressed. So his solution was to buy her a friend because they're social. Yeah. And so, okay, he's trying at least he didn't, you know, right. Butcher it or immediately throw it away. Right. So fine. Well, he he tried a solution. Right. Well, then he decided to move to Puerto Rico, um, you know, to evade taxes, um, allegedly. Um, And he claimed before he left that he he had to rehome the pigs because he said it was too hard to bring the pigs with him. Also, if got rehome. okay, if you can't. But make sure it's good. Oh, that's where I was. Mm. I'm trying really hard. I know. Hard. You're, you're like, you're really working on that positivity. <laughs> um, yeah, he said it was too difficult to bring the pigs with him. Um, and that's kind of the last we heard of it. This was two years ago. He said he was giving them away to someone that knew what they were doing, like a farmer or something. Yeah, okay. Hadn't heard anything since. Well, a few days ago, this um, rescue and sanctuary center called The Gentle Barn, posted on TikTok that they found a pig abandoned in a California field with a life-threatening infection. And guess whose pig it was? It was was Logan's. Yeah. Uh, Her name's Pearl, by the way. How freaking cute. cute. Because people recognized it immediately. Because you know those, like, uh, animal rescue videos go mega viral. Yeah. Everyone loves seeing a good story. Because they they did. They rescued her. They got rid of the infection. Yeah. You know, so this went, this viral, this video went viral and immediately people were like that's pearl like yeah. what is going on so the gentle barn said pearl was found alone was in- this the gentle barn in santa paula or santa i think Cla- so i think so santa clarita mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm going there <gasps> what you're gonna not be here and that's where i was gonna take you why are you going because marnay invited me so abby and i are going i'm literally gonna cry I am she upset said that you can cuddle cows there. No. Wait, why can't we go back? Why is she going? She's going because her vegan friend is coming into town oh. and she wanted to do something fun with her and invited us. So what I'm hearing is, is we could go when we want and we could do this in the future again. <laughs> Great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they said Pearl was found alone in a field next to a pig who had passed. <gasps> Yep. No. She came to us with tattered ears and an infection. She's clearly been through so much trauma that we can't begin to imagine, but she's now safe with us. From what I from what we've been told, it's believed she was purchased originally from a breeder by an influencer. People often buy mini pigs or teacup pigs for clout online, believing they will stay that small when they inevitably grow very large and have many unexpected needs. Sadly, they are discarded. Uh, and they said that Pearl has fully recovered from her infection and that she's going to live out her days happily on their sanctuary Great. with friends. So Pearl is taken care of. Um, but obviously everyone is speculating that that other pig that she was found with was the friend. Yeah. That, and she was like chilling next to it because that's her freaking friend. Right. So Logan, after he started getting all of this hate online uh, for not properly rehoming his pigs. Yeah. Wrote a letter to the gentle barn claiming that he rehomed the pig to a horse farm in April of 2020. But uh, before he moved to Puerto Rico, but that w- he wasn't aware that she had been rehomed again. And he said that while Pearl was in his care, he treated her like a princess, but that he couldn't take her on the move and blah, blah, blah. And he ended up because the hate was just flooding and flooding and flooding yeah. and wouldn't stop. So he ended up tweeting out, as far as I know, the farmer that he originally homed Pearl to and the friend called the gentle barn to pick her up and denies that there is a second pig. Pearl was transferred alone. This is incredibly heartbreaking situation. I had Pearl for two years. I'm beyond thankful for Gentle Barn for taking care of her and I'll do whatever I need to aid in Pearl's care. So it's like this weird thing with with like how much responsibility falls back on him once the pigs were rehomed. Yeah, I want to know why the pigs were rehomed again. Right. Like, did you not like were the like. Did you not make sure those people were equipped? Because, like, I've had dog trainers who I looked into that were, like, fan- that uh, like, the internet raved about them. And then when I met them in person, I found I realized they were, like, terrible people. Right. But it took me, like, a minute of, like, a couple of times, like, seeing them or training with them. Uh, so, like, he could have very much thought this farmer was like, yeah, man, I'll take these pigs. They'll be great. I've been farming for years. Yeah. And then the farmer was like, oh, oh I actually don't have the money or the space for this. Right. Like, or. But then rehome them. Don't dump them. Like, 
uh, the farmer, not Logan. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you so doing? So I don't know. We'll never know what happened. Yeah. Um. One, to obviously look into what you're buying before you buy it. Yeah. Um. And then, yeah, I mean, he has some response. I think he does have some responsibility because he did purchase those animals and they, mm-hmm. you know, but at the same time, if he didn't know what was going on and like he really thought like he homed them to a good place, then that's like... Yeah, it's a weird... It's like a weird little thing. Yeah. The, I want to I wanna hone in on the farmer that took them. Yeah. Well, and it's also like led the internet to this bigger discussion of like influencers buying animals for the purpose of putting them in videos. Oh, and, yes. It's trash. Yeah. And then not knowing how to properly take care of them or just giving them up once like the clout dies down. Yes. Like what do we do about that? Yeah. Because I've seen so many people, especially in the hype house, they'll buy like these really expensive cats or like these like reptiles or something and then they don't know how to deal with them. Yes. And then you just like, they slowly start fading out and then you just never see them in videos again. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do about that. But, yeah. All right. Can we have something else besides sad? Sad. Yes. Um, okay, so we have one last big story before we move into our positive news. And it's it's not sad. It's just it's a continuation of our Britney conspiracy theories. Oh, you love a Britney conspiracy theory. All right. Hit me. This one was pretty good. All right. So if you missed it, the last time we talked about um, Britney and, you know, the whole conspiracy going on around her is uh, there were some pretty convincing rumors going mm. around that Britney is once again either being controlled or just missing altogether. Yes. But that her like manager and husband don't want people knowing so they're like photoshopping her into stuff and posting old videos and pretending it's new and like yeah you know whatever um and especially it was throwing people off because sam her husband kept being spotted out and about at these really popular places and paparazzi would get photos of him and she not her and she yeah she'd be nowhere like to be seen but then later when sam would post his own photos Brittany would be in them yeah so, so but no Right. So it was a really weird situation that was going on. And right we now. We have not had a paparazzi photo of Britney in months. Mm-mm. Even like pre-wedding, I want to say, is the like closest one we've had. Like, yeah, it's been a long time. OK. Um, And when she is in photos of like Sam's, she looks not like she's in them. Like they look semi photoshopped. OK. Um, And then according to BuzzFeed News, hashtag where is Britney currently has a hundred and nineteen million views on the app. Like this is like yeah going around because she hasn't done a live video either. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. Um, and so the conspiracies are getting so much attention that now even Paris Hilton has stepped up and made a public response. So Paris Hilton is one of Britney's best friends. Yeah. Um, and last week she posted a picture from her. F- so Paris's friend Cade Hudson, not Kate Hudson, the woman. Okay. Cade C A D E. I got very confused when I was. I did too because I was listening. You're like a thirty five birth, thirty fifth birthday, and I was like, Kate Hudson yeah. is only four years older than me. Cade, Cade, Cade a okay. man. Yes. Um, it was his birthday. He is one of Britney's managers and one of Paris's best friends. Um, mm-hmm. and so she posted a picture at his birthday party of Britney herself and Cade all smiling at the camera. I saw the photo. It really does look photoshopped. Okay. Like it was very poorly done. And after uh, this photo was posted. Oh, and people were realizing because Cade was um, filming himself like in the car, like walking into the party. And he was wearing a completely different outfit than he was in the photo. And same thing with Paris. So people are like, why are you reposting this really old photo of you three together? If it is real, it's a very old photo or (sighs) it's photoshopped. All right. So um, after all of this went, you know, wild online, Paris had to comment because people wouldn't stop. Yeah. Um, And she said to all of those asking, some of these photos were taken on on an iPhone. So they ended up being blurry. So they used an app called Remini to make it look unblurry. And sometimes the AI distorts the images. Didn't even want to dignify this with a response. But some of these conspiracy theories are absolutely ridiculous. Um. And then did you see, so that was like one thing. She kind of tried to squash it. People were like, okay, whatever. It's probably just an old photo. She was just trying to make people think that someone famous was there. Like, I don't know, that Bernie was there. But then um, did you see what Perez Hilton posted recently? No, he's trash, but continue. He is trash, but like it got things stirred again. So to add fuel to the fire, this is according to Elle magazine, Australia. I saw his videos, but they break it down a lot better than I could. Okay. Um, Perez Hilton shared a video uh, where he confirmed to fans that the concerns over Britney missing were warranted. That was his exact quote and that things are bad. 
but uh, that none of the theories he's seen online are correct. So he said, your concern is warranted, but when the truth comes out, you will all be surprised. A lot of fans would not take it well if I said what has been reported about her, but especially if I shared what I know. I don't think it would help Britney. If I spoke, it would hurt her. And then he added that she was not okay and that this was important to understand. He said, first, she's not okay. Second, you guys are not crazy. Third, almost all conspiracy theories are crazy. So he basically came forward and was like, I know something you don't. There's something yeah. bigger going on. And then I saw a TikTok conspiracy theory and it got lots of traction and it had some good points. I'm not I'm not going to say I believe it, but it's it's a good story. OK, so this TikTok that I saw, this is all allegedly. OK, they said that basically they believed that Britney's wedding was a huge cover up to get her out of the country and to get her connected with people again, because, you know, Even though she got out of her conservatorship, she was still held up in the house. Yeah. Like she wasn't seeing anyone, wasn't going anywhere, hadn't really been able to talk with friends. Yeah. And so this wedding was kind of the perfect like reason to get everyone she cares about and that cares about her in one spot. Mm. And so they're saying in this TikTok that because she had two conservatorships going, she had the one with her father, which was the main one that everyone was trying to get, you know, out the window. That's the one that got thrown out. That was the really damaging one but that she had a smaller, quieter um, conservatorship with her manager as well. And the only way to get that conservatorship nullified is to be out of the country for six or more months. So people are saying that Paris Hilton is hiding Britney. I was going to say Paris is a friend. Like, I, so if she is still, if she's keeping up an appearance for Britney, mm-hmm. it's because it's for good reason. It's oh, yeah. To, it's not to harm her. It's to no. help her. Yeah, they're really good friends. And Paris Hilton is like one of the number one spokespeople for human trafficking and sex trafficking right now. And she is. And yeah, Uh and she is also someone who was traumatized by Mm -hmm. troubled teen, troubled teen, paparazzi, the glorified whatever. And she's. A very smart businesswoman. She's oh, I didn't She's realize so this smart until her documentary came out because she was sent away to the troubled teen industry camp. Mm-hmm. If you don't know about that, maybe at some point we'll talk about it. But go Google it. It is horrendous. Her parents voluntarily sent her there, and she was horrifically traumatized by that place. Um, it's basically like a conversion camp. Yeah, it's a work camp for teens. Yeah. Um, and now she like goes to like see Congress all the time to speak against it to try and get laws made. Yeah. I had no idea she was actually like that intelligent and no motivated. she is yes yeah like and she was the like she w- figured out how to manipulate paparazzi yes. and then like you know social like she figured out everything before anyone else like yeah she was famous for literally no reason she and, was famous for being the dumb pretty blonde and yeah she was the kardashians before the kardashians yes. happened yeah and she's the, the she's the og she's yeah. smart yeah Mm -hmm. yeah well and she said she said in an interview before that her like parents pushed her to act that way because they knew it'd get like attention yeah and that she knew the entire time she was acting dumb and like dumbing down herself for these videos but she knew it also brought in the money and the fame so yeah she's incredibly brilliant and she has an like an enormous amount of connection so people Mm -hmm. are saying they think she's hiding britney and i would think valid yeah she she gave up a like djing for the Biden. white house yeah to uh-huh. go to britney's wedding like yeah it was a big deal right yeah there were so many weird things around britney's wedding that people are pointing out but i don't know it's it's a it's a good story if and we have else. actual pictures from the wedding right no just from sam and britney's points of view so no one uh like a few people there like paris like posted like a selfie and stuff so people are saying like the wedding actually did happen it just wasn't for the reason that they're okay, saying yeah, it yeah. is um but yeah, there was no paparazzi photos. There was no professional photos of the wedding. It was all people's individuals on their phones. Okay, but Brittany did post. Like, we know that she was at her own wedding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But again, we don't think Brittany's controlling her social media. So even if she did post, it's like, who posted that? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So it's... it's a- <laughs> she was alive. That's what I was getting at. Oh, yeah. I assume so. Because if she wasn't, I, I feel like Paris at least would know that. Yeah. Like, she would have no reason to hide if Britney had passed. Yes. You know? So it's a good story, if nothing else. <sighs> you I hope one day we find out the truth. Me too. Are you ready for some good news? Please. All right. Rory McCarty wandered into his local Walmart one day to discover that his door greeter, you know, mm-hmm. they have those at Walmart, um, was an 82-year-old Navy veteran and widower, widower 
who was still working eight to nine hour shifts at Walmart every oh day. Oh, God. Because America, capitalism. Um, he knew he wanted to help him, and uh, Rory's personal social media presence allowed him to do that. So according to Good News Network, McCarty runs an extermination business called Bug Boys, and he started posting videos of, like, the gross, creepy crawlies he was finding at his work or, like, tips and tricks oh, and stuff okay, like that. Yeah. He was posting that on TikTok and quickly gained uh, 300,000 followers. So he decided to put that to good use, um, got online, posted a video of this veteran and, you know, of them together and saying his story. And this is at the beginning of December. And it has since been viewed over three million times. And the GoFundMe that he created met its goal within just a few days. And he raised one hundred and eight thousand dollars and gave it to this man and helped him retire. I love that. Yeah. Retirement, a fundamental right. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one was really cute. All right. Frontier Airlines is offering free travel vouchers to anyone who adopts one of three newborn kittens that were uh, brought to the Las Vegas Animal Foundation Hospital. Oh, that's fun. And they're doing it because the three kittens, they're just two weeks old. Their eyes aren't even open yet. Uh, they were found in North Las Vegas and were given the names Spirit, Delta, and Frontier. No. Why? I don't know. This article tried to get to the bottom of it, of like why they chose those names. And they're basically like, eh, I don't know. They're good names. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. But of course, as soon as like the adorable kittens were posted with their names, it went viral on Twitter. Yeah. And so Frontier ended up seeing it um, and thought it was adorable. And so now they're offering two $250 vouchers totaling $500 which are redeemable until the end of, until, you know, the end of whenever they decide it's not. Um, <laughs> for, those of the, for those looking to adopt uh, the kittens. And they said, we are delighted. The rescue organization decided to name these three adorable kittens after airlines, including ours. Underscoring the plight of animals is near and dear to us. We are more than happy to provide a little extra incentive to encourage the adoption of these, of these three precious kittens. That's cute. I like that. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. I'm going to... This is coming straight from Good News Network because I'm good at a lot of things. That's one of my New Year's things. Is I'm going to talk nicer about myself. I'm great at a lot of things. Yeah. Understanding and repeating science is not one of them. The figures. She's good with facts and fundamental rights, not the figures. Not the figures. So like vaccines, I can talk about all day. But if you ask me about like the technology that like how things work, no. I can tell you the statistics on them. Oh, you, yeah. I just, I, no. Anyway, so I'm, this is coming straight from great news. Um, a biotech company announced this week that the Department of Agriculture in the U.S. granted them a conditional license for a honeybee vaccine. So the vaccine will boost the bee's immune systems to fight against American fowl brood disease, which is a bacteria-based condition known to attack colonies. Um, so we're saving the bees. We're saving the bees. We're, we're saving the bees. With a vaccine. I love it. It's wild. And so yes. they say once they get it into a few bees, once though, because, okay, first of all, I only found this out a few years ago. Do you know how honey is made? We get the pollen and put it back in the honeycomb and then stir it up with your butt and we have it. That's what I thought. Oh, no. I have been misinformed my whole life. The bees collect the pollen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> eat it or ingest it i don't know whatever and they poop it out they throw it up <gasps> honey is bee throw up yes get into it and it is so delicious i love it Ooh. so they say if they can get a few of the bees and then they can use it for like food sources in like the winter and stuff um what people are gonna boycott honey because they're gonna say there's vaccines in it oh i could definitely see that happening I'm oh, eat that honey. oh my more honey for us yeah bye <laughs> Um, so they said if they can get it into a few of the bees, once the bees regurgitate and produce the honey and the other bees eat it, and then those bees actually like produce larva, mm -hmm. that it's just going to continue pa be, like being passed through generations. Love it. So it's not like we're going to have to individually capture a million bees and inject them. Like it's just going to take a few and then they'll be good. <laughs> Could you bees. imagine? Don't you inf <laughs> give me my vaccine. This is my fundamental right not my, to. <laughs> my body, my choice. <laughs> Um, all right. This one was really cool. During the, during the pandemic, a woman named Jess Mel uh, fell into a deep depression. Um, oh, she, apologies. Yes. She suffered from anxiety and depression, but the lockdown, like, exasperate. What's that word? Exasperated it? Exas Exasperated it. This sounds wrong, but also right. Made it worse. <laughs> um, and so instead of just, like, um, 
you know, falling even deeper into it, she decided she wanted to do something about it. So she took matters into her own hands. And on December 27th, 2021, as the pandemic was sort of fading, um, she decided to try something new every day for 100 days. This was her goal. Love it. So she wanted to see if it would help improve her mental health. And it worked. And she's over a year in. And she said she's not going to stop anytime soon. Uh, Some of her firsts were, maybe you can explain this to me, bleeding a radiator. Bleeding a radiator, that sounds like flushing it. Okay. That sounds like you're, you're like, you're tuning up your radiator. In my, in the context clues I'm given, that's what I think that means. That sounds great. Um, and then she also taught herself how to use a sewing machine. She joined. <gasps> I want to do that soon. Yeah. She joined a gardening group. She traveled around Europe to places like Vienna, Budapest, Copenhagen, and Dublin. She tried speed dating and line dancing. And she said, I feel pretty emotional about it, to be honest. I can't believe it. I wanted to finish it off with something exciting. So because they they were interviewing her at the end of a full year of doing this. Yeah. So in the end, I finished up by convincing my dad to let me sit on the roof of his car as he drove down the road. (gasps) My final one was making my first ever Instagram reel of some things I had done in the year. And she said the best part about this whole experience is putting herself out of her comfort zone. And she said, I feel like I should constantly be doing something so she logs uh, it all on, on her Instagram page. So if you want to go check it out, it's, uh, oh, I didn't even finish that quote. She said, I feel like I should be constantly <laughs> doing something and enjoying life to the fullest. Um, and if you want to check out her adventures, her at is little underscore Jess underscore X. If you want to follow along her That's journey. That's fun. I yeah. like that. Um, do we have time for one last good news? Yes, we do. Ah, yay. Okay. Uh, two podcasters. Uh, Emily and Rachel did not do this <laughs> are against whatever's about to be said what are, we? are very much supportive oh, we of- are supp- <laughs> just dang it i ruined it just go <laughs> so two podcasters <clears throat> my bad do you hear this how what yes i hear that you're Water. one foot from me <laughs> Water. Water. I, uh, it. I need it um, two podcasters got two wrongfully accused men out of jail by uncovering new evidence about their case. Oh, we are very in support of this. Yes. Susan Simpson and Jacinda Davis host a podcast called Proof, which is a true crime podcast. And there they, are so many. I love them. I love them so much. They decided to do an episode on Daryl Lee Clark and Kane Joshua story and their whole incident, um, which was when they were growing up and they were just teenagers, they stood trial for a murder of their 15-year-old friend who died of a gunshot wound in 1996. They interviewed the two men, and this is the story that they got. Um, This is a direct quote. The details go like this. At a party, 15-year-old Brian Boeing shot himself in a game of Russian roulette with a gun allegedly provided by Story. Manslaughter was to be the original charge, but Boeing's distraught family urged for the charge to be stiffened to murder, not manslaughter, um, which is more serious. Uh, and charged Clark, who had been collab- who had been a collaborating alibi of his absence from the whole situation. So basically, they were saying they were playing Russian Russian roulette at a party. One kid died, and because the one of the uh, people that was in jail brought the gun allegedly, um, he was being charged for murder. And the people guy's actually accomplice. play Russian roulette for funsies. I thought it was made up, but they're saying that's what happened. Um, Let's play a game where someone is for sure going to die. Right. I uh, yeah. I I really thought that game was made up. I thought that was like what you forced like people to do in like a standoff situation. Like you were going to murder them anyway. Like uh, like the evil person in a, uh, the villain in the movie makes you know the hero do it, and right. then the hero's like, "Got you. I ate the bullet and but, w- pooped it out, and now I'm using it on you." Like oh, that's so, good. <laughs> You know, just yes, I guess. Like I thought it was like a thing that it was like you only do that to be evil. Oh, uh, not just like for funsies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, interesting. Um. Well, after the podcasters interviewed the two men, they noticed some like. Well, obviously, they heard the two guys' side of the story, where the guys were saying like this didn't happen. We were yeah. at this certain place. They were saying like parts of the story weren't adding up. And so the, in, the interviewers, the podcasters ended up interviewing the party host and they got her to admit on camera that the police had coerced her into making false statements regarding the whole situation. So that has been eating her alive for oh, years. That's for why sure. she finally just caved. Yeah. 
So after finding a few more discrepancies in the case, they sent the whole story to the Innocence Project, which is a, a foundation that works on getting people wrongly accused okay. out of prison who like can't afford good attorneys yeah, and like, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and they worked tirelessly and freed the two men and they were able to make it home in time for Christmas. Wow. Can they sue that police department? Oh, absolutely. Get your dollar, please. Uh huh. Yeah. The jail, like if you're if you're wrongly accused and you get out, the prison will pay you, but it's like a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, no, sue. They've been in jail or in prison since nineteen ninety six. Sue so them. Get, sue them all. Get your bag. Get your bag and and please try and make something like of happiness from your life that the little yeah. you have left. And good on those podcasters. Yes, I love that. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you did you have a question? Yes. Biggest one that came in, New Year's resolution. I know you don't like them, right? I usually don't. I was like, I just try and drink two glasses of water every day. That was it. Oh. <laughs> I literally sometimes maybe drink one. Yeah, honestly, same. I don't know why I laughed. Sometimes I don't drink a glass at all. So Yeah, there okay. have been many where I'm like, oh, why don't I feel good? I feel like weird. And right. Abby's like, have you drank anything other than coffee today? I'm like, shh. Why would you say that? <laughs> It's got water in it. I yeah. wait a really long time to drink my iced coffee and the ice melts. Yeah. And then I have water with coffee in it. Yes. <laughs> so that's it. Two cups of, of water a day. And to be nicer at work. Yeah. I, I, it's too late to come up with any more. It's the middle of January. Well, we could just say that you came up with it at the beginning. We could, no, I don't want to lie. Huh. Fine. You'd only be lying. Well, yeah. Got it. <laughs> my new year's resolution is to lie i'm kidding um <laughs> uh, mine is to take care of my body more because i feel like um i don't get enough sleep and i, you I feel like that's just a fact <sighs> fact figures fundamental rights get your sleep got three and a half whole hours last night <laughs> that was because you picked me up from the airport and, eh, and at 2 a.m and forgot that we were doing this today mm -hmm. so i had to wake up early but um yeah i want to get more sleep um, cause that's really important. And I want to, uh, try and exercise a little bit more Okay, okay. because okay. I just don't do it because like, it, I don't know. I just, I always make an excuse. So I'm no, like, it's very easy to make an excuse. Yeah. I'm like, no, like it's happening. So exercise my thing is more. if I don't exercise in the morning, I won't. And oh. sometimes we have things like this where I had a, a well, one, I fell asleep at three thirty four a.m. Yeah. And so I, I had to sleep in until at least oh, 930 yeah. Yeah. to slightly function today. Yeah. And so I was like, well. I have a podcast I filmed with this chick Allie that I was like, I have to do that at 11. So I don't have time to work out in between. And now it's yeah. over. I've already showered. Yeah. So, yeah. And just eat more good food. All right. Sounds good. Off well, to a good start with my Uncrustable this morning. Yeah. Well, at least you ate something. <laughs> <laughs> Some food is better than no food. True. Uh, well, that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoy this longer episode. I hope you guys are having a new year. We are excited to uh, fill your ears with goodness every Friday morning. So please subscribe, follow, and listen and like and do all the things. Um, we love you very much. Uh, I'm Rachel Ballinger. I'm Emily Brostaff. And that's it. Okay. Bye! <laughs>Thank you for listening to this week's episode of All Things Internet. Please make sure to like and follow our podcast on whichever platform you're currently listening to it on. And make sure to follow us at Podcast ATI on Twitter, where you can ask questions and get the latest updates on our show. We love you. Thanks for listening. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and this has been All Things Internet.